you need a business bank account and what can having one do do to help you get financing for your business that's exactly what we're going to talk about today today we're going to talk about the whys you should want to have a business bank account how to manage it per, properly per lender's perspective what they're really looking at when they're asking you for bank statements uh the benefits of having a business bank account things you don't think about that you could use business bank accounts for and basically everything else about a business bank account including how to get it set up and how to use it the right way to be able to qualify for financing. Now we're using a brand new software here today, so work with me. Um, if you're telling, if you're coming in, tell me where you're tuning in from. I uh, always like saying hello. And again, we're just kind of testing out a new platform, so I'm still figuring out if our chat works and guests that are in here and how everything works. So if you don't mind, and you're coming in. Make sure you say hello. Tell me where you're coming in from. Okay. So that being said, business bank account. The first thing is you got to know that having a business bank account affects your fundability. It affects your ability to get money uh, from lenders and credit issuers. This is one of the basic things they look at. Now, in a lot of cases, you're not being asked for bank statements. So for example, I see this a couple ways. I see one, you're applying for a loan, a credit line, some kind of funding, some kind of financing. And the financing, the lenders want to then point to your bank statements, right? Well, that's obvious. They ask for your bank statements. They're reviewing certain things. Today, I'm going to decode exactly what they're looking for, about five things on these bank statements. But then there's the other side where you're just getting a credit card, for example, and they're asking you for a bank reference. So the bottom line is you need to have a bank account set up for your business. It's a basic foundational element of fundability. Even if lenders, credit issuers don't ask you for bank statements, they're still oftentimes going to ask you for a bank reference verifying that you have a physical bank account set up as a matter of fact when i set up a new business i often in uh, basically come in i make sure the entity is available i make sure the domain is available i buy the domain in a place like godaddy then the next thing that i do is i then go and get the address and the phone number for the business set up then i set up the business and the secretary of state i've gone through this before the order i go through is a little bit different than most is setting up the business because my order gets my address and phone number before Secretary of State set up, so I don't have to go back and change that for fundability purposes. But after I get it set up with the Secretary of State, I get my entity in the state, I get an EIN number free from IRS.gov, the next step I take is I get a bank account. It's almost one step, meaning that I set up an entity, EIN number, and bank account all, of the, all step back to back, uh, same day. As a matter of fact, I went once and found in less than one hour, I could do all three of these. Get the entity set up, get the EIN from IRS.gov, take that paperwork to my bank and set my bank account up. So again, basic component of fundability also ties into some of your bank credit scores you might not know about. We're going to talk about these things as well. So a lot of benefits here, right? Maintaining records with accuracy, preparing reports for accountants, bookkeepers, other people that may need them, tax preparation. We're getting an SBA credit line right now. So as a result of that, we've got to have our bank accounts set up. We've got to be managing them properly to get approved. Other uh, credit scores linked to how you manage your bank account. We'll talk about those today as well. So a lot of benefits by having this and maintaining this. Hello from Austin, Texas. Uh, Andrea, thanks for saying hello. And if you don't mind, tell me where you're coming in from, because again, brand new streaming software we're testing today. Uh, with called Melon and versus StreamYard, what we've used. And I want to make sure my comments and everything is working. So tune in, tell me where you're coming in from and say hello so I can say hello back. Benefits of separate business bank accounts, right? More manageable fees. Uh, oftentimes business bank accounts have less fees than personal because they make so much money on us because we keep more money in business bank accounts than we do personal. Uh, it's easier to get bank loans. We're getting a credit line right now through regions, which is where we do our bank our banking from, right? So it's easier for us to get a credit line or a loan from bank from regions when we keep our money with them. We have relationships with them. I have relationships with my banker. And if I need things that typically would require going in, I can oftentimes message my business banker and they'll help me. They'll help me. If I'm out, there's been a case where I couldn't get to the bank, needed to send an emergency wire, for example. So there are things that you could do when you have a relationship with your banker that you can't do if you don't, including making it easier to get loans or credit lines. And again, uh, how you handle your bank account can also help lenders make credit decisions. They oftentimes do whether you know it or not. We're going to talk about the credit scores they're using behind the scenes. You don't even know that they're using. So how do you choose the business bank account? Well, you know, choose a banker that can act as an advisor. So yeah, it, it, you know, people ask me this all the time. We're 
Where do I go to set up a bank? What's the best bank? I don't think there is one. I think you have to look at it. And it depends on what you're going to use the bank account for. And now, let me give you an example. If you, people ask me what the best credit card is, I say, well, there's no answer to that. It depends on what you're looking for. Do you want a longer 0% APR period? Or do you want the lowest interest rate after the 0% expires? Do you want the most travel points for hotels? Do you want the most airline points for flights? Do you use money mostly in office supply stores or grocery stores? There's all different kinds of benefits, including annual fees. For example, I was with somebody the other day. They were looking at a $650 annual fee American Express card. It made no sense. Even the benefits, you'd have to use them all to pay that annual fee every year. So again, what are you looking for? Depends on what card's best for you. Send the bank account, right? For me, having one close to you matters. My bank right now literally is less than a five-minute drive for me. My bank at my last house was five-minute drive for me. Bank from the office, five-minute drive. So it regions, I wouldn't be banking with regions if I was in another state where regions weren't prevalent, where they weren't around everywhere. You might have a bunch of Chase banks or Bank of America. So I don't necessarily think one is better than another when you choose a type of bank. It depends on what you're using the bank account for. Some might have better interest rates than you're putting in the savings account or better interest rates on money market accounts or less fees or have extra conveniences for you that are important. You've got to figure out what's important and then choose a bank. I've been with them all, Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, Regions, and then some. Uh, and I found the bank and how they operate doesn't really matter as much to me as the relationship I have with the banker. So build a relationship with the banker. And most of the time, that is really uh, the key to finding the right bank, the right bank account, is just working with the right advisor within that bank and then telling them your needs and let them get you set up with the different accounts that you may need. Now, you want to choose a bank in your industry. Sometimes they won't help you. So I used to bank with Wachovia when I owned a credit improvement business. And they shut me down because they no longer serviced my industry. I never did anything wrong. They just said, we don't do a credit industry. We shut you down. So you've got to come in and you've got to work with the bank that works within your industry. If you're in a restricted industry, you need to check right from the beginning. Hey, do you work with me in this industry? Because you don't want to keep all your money in a bank where they won't get, help you get a merchant account. They won't help you get a loan. They won't help you get a credit line because they don't like your industry. Like if you don't like my industry enough to give me merchant accounts, loans, or credit lines, then I'm not going to keep my money there. So those are some things to check into. So I remember being on vacation once. I'll never forget. I was in my RV on Disney's campgrounds when I got a call from my business partner, Megan. I said, they just shut down our merchant account. We didn't do anything wrong. We just stopped servicing our industry. We called our banker and our banker within 48 hours had a new merchant account set up. That's because we have a relationship with our banker. It's because they're okay with our industry. If they weren't okay with our industry, getting merchant accounts, getting loans, getting credit lines would be harder to do. And like I said, I'm not going to give you my money and my deposits if you're not going to help me and like me enough in my industry to offer things like merchant accounts and, and, and loans and credit lines. So make sure that they are friendly towards your industry, okay? Um, so some things to think about there as well. And uh, man, it's a lot. Oh, we got a bunch of people coming in and saying hello. So thank you. It is verifying to me that the chat is working. I appreciate it. And hello from Lubbock, Texas. Philly is in the house. Seattle's in the house. Hey, Roseville, Michigan. Dale, thanks for saying it. For saying, oh, North Dakota. Morris, we don't have a lot of people in here from North Dakota. Very, very, very uncommon. So thanks for coming in. Gwen from Houston. What's up? Perry, Perry, Missouri. What's going on? Hello. And Michael, thanks for coming in. Johnny, thanks for coming in from California and saying hello from Chicago, Virginia, Kansas City, Georgia, North Carolina, Atlanta's in the house, New Jersey's in the house. Thanks, everybody, for coming in and saying hello. Okay, so how do you do it the right way? Well, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need an EIN, which is why I say you got to get your records from Secretary of State. When you get your Secretary of State records, usually like articles of corporation, if you're a corporation, then you go get your EIN. Then you take the EIN doc and your articles into the bank, and then they will open a business bank account for you. Now, it's fairly easy to do. Usually $50 or less is needed to open a new business bank account. If you have your corporation papers, if you have your EIN papers, it's fairly easy. It just takes somewhere of 10 to 30 minutes, depending on the bank. Bank of America took me an hour to set up a new account with them. It's one of the many reasons I don't deal with Bank of America. But again, it can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour to set up a new bank account once you have one act, everything you need to walk in there. Now, uh, what do you need? As we mentioned, the deposit, ID, article was a corporation, entity, uh, EIN, um, that is your basic stuff. So a lot of people ask me, when I open a business bank account, why are they taking my personal social security number? Well, that's federal law. 
So in June of 2018, the government came in and said, if you are a bank and you open a new account for somebody, a business, you have to verify uh, the owner of the business. So what they basically said was they came in and said the government did this to prevent money laundering. And they said, if you're going to open a new credit card, uh, give somebody a loan, give somebody a bank account as a bank, you have to verify that person really is a real person and that they're a, 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 an actual citizen here. So you have to supply your social security number. So this is required. You're going to have to provide your social security number, open a business bank account. It's not the bank's requirement. It's the government's requirement. So keep in mind that you're going to have to do that. Okay. And again, you're going to have to have your business set up the right way. They might have a problem with PO boxes. They might have a problem with UPS addresses. If you're using a real virtual at a virtual office, like a Regis DaVinci Alliance, you shouldn't have any of those kind of issues. So business information has got to be consistent everywhere. Very important. We talk about this with fundability all the time. Make sure your name, your address, your phone number is the same everywhere before you go in there and up, set up your business bank account. This is why I say that I get my address and phone number, then set up my secretary of state records, then get EIN, and then get bank account because then they all have the correct address and phone number. Here's why this is important. There's a, uh, there's a third party data aggregator known as the Small Business Finance Exchange, okay, SBFD. And this is owned by its members, which are the banks. You've heard, heard me sometimes talk about it. And the banks like Chase, Bank of America, all, all the major banks are parts of the SBFE. Uh, almost every major credit card issuer is part of SBFE as well. And they have a give to get uh, mentality. So what that means if I'm Chase and I want to be part of SBFE, I have to give the SBFE all of my information on all of my customers in order to get all the information from Bank of America about their customers. And the idea here is to catch overlap. So if I go apply for a loan or a credit card at Bank of America, uh, what most people don't realize is Bank of America puts that information into SBFE and Wells Fargo knows I applied, no even knows the information I put on the application. So here's why this is important. If you put the wrong information in SBFE, then first of all, not just that bank has the wrong info, all banks do. So I give Wells Fargo an incorrect phone number, an incorrect address that's different from Secretary of State everywhere. Now, all banks have the wrong information. And to make it worse, uh, the people that those are the, the vendors of SBFE, the ones that take information from the Small Business Finance Exchange and put it out in the world, all the members are credit bureaus. LexisNexis, Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, Experian. They're all major credit reporting agencies. So now they get the information from SBFE and they put it out on our credit reports. And when other people are getting data about us, they're giving that data to them. So you think that making a mistake and giving your banker the improper info is not a big deal. It's a huge deal because your banker puts it in the system. The system gives it to SBFE, SBFE gives it to all banks. Then the bureaus come in. They get the information from SBFE. They start dispersing it to everybody. So you've got to make sure that your information is congruent, especially when you set up your bank account. Or this creates all kinds of problems. Now you try to go get a loan down the road, you don't realize the information you put in your application is different than what Wells Fargo has. And you don't know that Wells Fargo got your information for Bank of America when you fill out an application incorrectly. And then all of a sudden the credit bureaus have it. It just creates a huge mess. So you got to make sure that all this information is congruent everywhere before you set up the business bank account. What you're putting on the application when you set up your bank account should be the same as Secretary of State with IRS everywhere else, or it creates all kinds of issues, okay? So now that being said, um, when you set up a business bank account, they're going to ask about checks, and here's my recommendation to you. Do not get your checks through the bank. They use a, 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 a check, check company called, called like Heartland Clark or something like that, and even my banker will tell me, don't get checks from them. It's outrageous. Now that so many people have moved online, the company that banks use to order checks has raised prices so much that you can go to a staples of the world and get your checks printed for a, a, a half or a third of the cost. So when you set up a new bank account, I never take their checks. They give you like some basic checks that you get in the very beginning, right? And those checks uh, you can use until you get your checks, but go to a staples, go to a, like a Vista printed world. There's all kinds of places out there. You can get those checks printed for a fraction of the price. Also, don't pay for their corporate kit, the seal and all. Don't pay for that, that stuff. I paid for so many companies to have that. Not once have I ever used any of the stuff provided. So don't pay all that extra fluff. Give them the money that you've got to have to open the bank account. Get your debit account set up. Get your PIN number. Get all that. But don't buy all the extra stuff. It's a complete waste of money if you do.
Hello from Forty, Texas. Veronica, Orange County is in the house. Thanks for coming in and saying hello. Corey, what's up? Corey says facts. If they can help you move on, relationships better. I agree. Uh, and uh, kind of like TK, TK, like TikTok. Hello from Ohio. Thanks for coming in. Sean Day from Columbia, South Carolina, Seattle, Washington, Minnesota's in the house. Thanks for saying hello. Gwen, how do we feel about opening business bank out with a second chance bank? Well, it depends on who the bank is. But uh, again, uh, I find that most business bank accounts are very similar to each other. So as long as it provides similar interest rates, benefits, incentives as other banks, I think that you're more than fine with that. Vicky says, what can I do to check uh, ca uh, to check cause I don't want to open my business bank account with SSN, but Chase Bank won't buy SSN. So hello. And we just talked about this, Vicky. So, the, and you, you probably put this question before I said it, but this isn't the bank's requirements, the federal government's requirement. The federal government requires if a bank open a new account, they verify the identity of the person opening it. It's to prevent money laundering. It's to prevent somebody that's not a real person opening a, ba a business right? Then using the business to open a bank account, laundering all kinds of money through that bank account without the person that opened the bank account and the business even being a legitimate person. So unfortunately, this is why it's required. Uh, it's also why uh, banks that issue business credit without a personal guarantee are still going to ask for your social because they have to verify your identity. Again, it is not their requirement. It is the bank's actual requirement. Um, and uh, uh, I order my checks for the company. Yep, we just talked about that as well. Okay. And Sterling Perry says, I order my checks from the company that posts an ad inside of the Washington Post and insert eight to eight to dollars to 25 for carbon copies. Hey, if you don't mind, Sterling Perry, just tell me who that company is. I, I appreciate that. I want to let everybody know. Courtney, what's up from Mobile coming in? Diane, hello from New York City. We'll leave the lights on. I love it. Diane, thanks for coming and saying hello. I was up there in your part of the woods in November. And Miss Rhonda says, I'm so glad to be a partner at Credit Suite. Such an amazing company. Thanks, Rhonda. I love you uh, giving us a shout out and saying hello. Okay. So that being said, the starter kit, don't get it. It's, it's completely useless. It doesn't make sense. It's a complete waste of your money. Okay. Now, more about business bank accounts. First of all, um, you can get some of them nowadays online. You know, so there's a bank that we use called North One we recommend. It's completely entirely online. There's other options, and I had my bis best business bank account stream the other day, and I talked about some ones you have not thought about. Lending Club has a great banking option, for example. Most people don't even think of Lending Club as having a bank. They do. On Deck has a bank account option, and having a bank account with On Deck makes it way easier to be able to get a loan from On Deck. They're one of the most popular cash flow lenders that will give you money just because you have consistent cash flow. So I've got more in that stream that I addressed, but those are just some examples of ones that are not typical banks you think about. So these online bank accounts are becoming more prevalent, more popular. These are great options for you as well. Something else I want to talk, I want to introduce you to is your check systems credit score. And I'm going to help you get it for free right now. So there is actually uh, two different types of credit scores. Well, we'll talk about this a few different ways. So first of all, you need to know that there are credit scores that monitor how you manage your bank account. Now, one of them is provided through check systems. I'm going to give this to you for free here. If you go to creditsuite.com forward slash check systems right here, I'm going to see if I can put this in the chat. Uh, I think maybe uh, everyone, here you go. Uh, there you go. I want to put that in. Creditsuite.com forward slash check systems. So if you go here, I put together a page for free for you to get your credit report from them, your credit score from them, security freezes, add, lift them, Add uh, security alerts, disputing with check systems, everything you need to navigate the secret credit report is right here, 100% for you for free. So go to creditsuite.com forward slash check systems, get your report, get your score, it's free to do. See what lenders know about you. They're looking at this to make all kinds of decisions on how you manage your bank account. Also, there is another one called the bank rating. You'll never see, it's an internal scoring system that banks use to judge how you manage your bank account. It's primarily driven based on your average balance over 90 days. So to have the, a, a score that's acceptable to get an SBA loan, you need to keep 10 grand in your bank account in there on average over 90 days. If you're just getting business off the ground, don't feel compelled to do everything to keep 10 grand in your bank account. It doesn't matter. But if I'm going to apply for an SBA loan, I make sure I've got at least 10 grand in my bank account on average for the three months before I apply. So that only really matters when you go to get an SBA loan, but just know that banks have this internal system. Check systems is really commonly used. So this is something you need to get access to. And again, it's 100% free to do so. So make sure you check that out as well. Okay, now 
Um, again, we talked about bank credit scores, what you need to know, uh, at least 10,000 in your account for the best bank rating, right? And there's other factors that tie into this as well, uh, including how you manage your bank account. Do you have more money going in the bank account than going out? Do you have a positive ending bank balance? How many accounts do you have with the bank? So there's a lot of things here. Check systems credit score, a bank rating credit score, what banks look for when they look at your bank statements. Let's just address all of this in one conversation. So what they're all looking for, these credit scores and lenders when they review your bank is a handful of things. First of all, how do you manage it? By manage it, meaning do you have money at the end of the month in your bank account? It's called positive ending bank balance. Very important. For your credit scores, check systems, for bank rating, for lenders, you need to have money in the account at the end of every month. If you don't and you try to get a loan, lenders are like, how is this person going to repay us? They don't even have money at the end of the month. Secondly, you can't have non-sufficient funds. If you're overdrawing the account, if you're taking more out of the account than there is money to take, then that's improper management. Lenders really frown down upon you not having a positive ending bank balance at the end of the month and you in not managing your bank account where you've got a bunch of NSFs. You've got to also make sure you've got more money going in in a month on average than coming out. So it doesn't have to be every month, but most months you want more money going in than going out. That's called positive, that's called positive cash flow. So you've got to make sure you've got positive cash flow, more money going in than going out. Lenders really like to see that. Credit issuers, the credit scores are better when you have that. They like to see a lot of regular deposits. Real estate agents is not what they want to see. They don't want to see too big deposits in your account. They want to see a lot of consistent deposits. So credit cards, you know, credit suite, we process credit cards. So we have credit card deposits from our merchant account every day. They like that. Retail stores, credit card deposits regular. So having a lot of consistent deposits, banks like to have as well. If you're doing these things, positive ending bank balance, reducing non-sufficient funds, more money going in the account than actually going in the account than coming out of the account, okay? If you're doing these things, then that's what lenders are primarily looking for to determine that you're managing your bank account responsibly. Oh, one more thing. How long you've had the bank account open for. So check systems, your bank rating, uh, when lenders review it, they oftentimes are looking at how long you've had that bank account open for. That calculates it too. That's why I'm telling you that I always go get my entity set up get my EIN and set up my bank account same day. I always do. I, I, there, I can't remember a business I've ever set up that I don't do those three things same day. I need to get that bank account open as soon as possible. It's what gives me legitimacy. Side note here, okay? This is why you don't buy shelf corporations. So I had a really high level guy approach me from one of my masterminds, owns a really big, successful, multi-million dollar media company. And he said, we're going to buy all these shelf corporations, start building credit and I, he said, I, I hear you're the guy. I said, I ain't your guy. I won't touch shelf corporations. I don't have anybody I recommend. Here's all the problems with them. I'd stay as far away as possible. And I got them on the right track to get it done the right way. Here's what you need to know. Okay, in credit reports, when I pull a credit report for a business, if an ownership changes, so if you buy a shelf corporation, you're buying it from somebody that owned the corporation. They're now saying, okay, you're the new owner of the corporation. There's an ownership change. Credit reports immediately red flag the report. There's all kinds of alerts and notifications. Lenders, credit issuers that are uh, given that business credit, that will give the business credit, they all see massive warning flags stating there was a change of ownership. And when that happens, lenders then look at your bank account to determine when the business was started because shelf corporations aren't sold with bank accounts. You go buy a corporation that's been sit on the shelf in Florida for four years. When I buy it, I didn't get the bank account with it. So now all of a sudden, Dun & Bradstreet says, oh, ownership change, ownership change. Lender goes, hey, go, let me go to check systems. Let me go look and see how long this person's had their bank account. That's when we're going to actually look at the startup date. So shelf corporations don't do anything for you because lenders and credit issuers and the credit bureaus all re-age the business to the bank account start date when an ownership change occurs anyways. So shelf corporations are a complete waste of your time and money because of this bank account aspect. And this is exactly why you want to open bank accounts as soon as possible. It improves your scores and it goes a long way with lenders and credit issuers as well. Okay. With consistency, deposit, age of account, we talked about all these things as well. Um, how much money, of course, you keep in your bank account is a factor that they look at as well. 
uh, the more money you keep, the, the, the safer it is for, for lenders, credit issuers, for the credit bureaus that issue credit scores, uh, the, the safer you are, the lower risk that you are. So we talked about check systems. It's something you definitely want to look at. And I've given you the link. Let me see right now. We went ahead and typed it in as well, uh, creditsuite.com forward slash uh, check systems. And we put that into the, the, the actual account. And Courtney says cabbage. I like this. Cabbage is another example of you know online lenders getting into bank account space. I appreciate that suggestion, Courtney. Thanks for giving me give, giving that shout out. And Vicky says yes. SBA wanted uh, wanted my check from the bank. Yeah, they do. They've got to verify that. And not only that, but they're also going to come in and they're also going to verify the information on your bank account. They get your bank statement. They're going to verify that that matches your Secretary of State records. It matches your application. They're looking to make sure all of this stuff is congruent which is again, why it's so important that you actually make sure that you have all these things correct. Okay, so uh, check systems, we talked about that with the problems it will cause. So that being said, let me kind of give you a brief recap here. First of all, it doesn't matter what, what, what bank you use to open the bank account, unless there's select benefits you want to choose one versus the other. I recommend it for convenience. And as I mentioned on deck, uh, uh, Courtney here, uh, you mentioned cabbage. Uh, uh, we talked about Lending Club. We talked about North One. These are all online banking account options that are becoming more popular than ever. So you got to choose the best one that works for you. Uh, again, the, the other thing to keep in mind is you're going to have to have your Secretary of State records. You're going to have to have your EIN paperwork when you go in there. You want to set this thing up as soon as possible. You don't want to get their checks. You don't want to get all their stuff that, that they're going to try to upsell you on. You want to keep an eye on your check systems credit score to know what other lenders see about you. And you can go to creditsuite.com forward slash check systems to do so. And you got to manage that bank account responsibly. Get it open as soon as possible. Have more money coming in than going out. Make sure you have positive funds at the end of every month. Don't overdraw the bank account. Keep as much money in there as it's reasonable to do. At least 10 grand over the last 90 days on average before you're ever applying for an SBA loan. And if you've done all these things, then it goes a long way to being able to help improve your fundability and get you money. You have to keep in mind that the biggest sector of business lending, if we look at all lending that takes place, credit lines, loans, and SBA loans, and cash flow financing, and merchant cash advances, and AR financing, blah, 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 and go on for 50 different kinds of funding. If we look at all of it, the biggest amount of money, the most money comes to us as entrepreneurs through a program called cash flow financing. Okay, if cash flow financing is just, they give us money because we have consistent money going through our bank account. Like uh, credit doesn't matter. Don't need collateral. We just need consistent money going through our bank account. So if we have that, it's the most popular kind of funding money called cash flow financing. And we can get the money in 72 hours or less, but they're looking at bank account management. They're looking at the things I told you they'll look at. So you got to manage the bank account responsibly because by having this bank account open and doing the things we talked about today, it opens up all kinds of options for you to get money, quick and easy money. Even if you have credit issues, even if you don't have collateral, even if you can't qualify for SBA loans and term loans and all these other credit cards and all these other things that are harder to get, you can still get that easily if you're managing the bank account, as we talked about today. So a lot of benefits. Improve your fundability. Opens up the door for loans, credit lines, increases credit scores like check systems. Uh, gives the right information to SBFE, which then goes to everybody else that's out there, right? To the credit bureaus, to everybody else. So a lot of reasons you want to have a business bank account set up and you want to manage it properly, which will help you be able to get financing. Now, we're going to talk about charitable credit cards. Next time we meet, so we'll talk about credit cards that can help you grow your business and also help charities at the same time. If you got value from this training, hit like and hit subscribe. Okay, by hitting like, then you tell other entrepreneurs, hey, this information is valuable. I got value from it, and I'll show it to more people with social platforms. And by subscribing, you'll be notified when we go live. We go live Tuesday and Thursday at 1, 11 o'clock on Wednesday, all Eastern time. And also, if you got value from this, make sure you give us a call. Uh, we have a free finance assessment that you get when you give us a call. And there's three things we do. We do a fundability assessment. We figure out what's wrong with fundability, give you advice on what to fix to make you more lendable. Then we'll even get your business credit reports at no cost from the credit reporting agencies, give you tips and tactics to build your business credit for free. And then we'll do a finance assessment. We'll, fund, we'll tell you all the funding you qualify for right now. A lot of entrepreneurs think they can't even get any money. And they get it on a finance assessment with us and get three, four, five different pre-approvals. It's all 100% free. And all you have to do is give us a call, 877-600-2487, or schedule online at creditsuite.com forward slash console. And also, don't forget to check out the rest of our social channels, top right of our page, creditsuite.com. 
Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, daily tips, one minute video tips from me on Insta and on uh, our Insta stories and on TikTok as well. I got a podcast with a half a million downloads called the Business Credit Financing Show. It's the only place I bring outsiders in to teach you the ins and outs of running and growing a business other than just money. All that happens there as well. All those social channels you can access, including the thousands of videos on our YouTube channel at creditsuite.com at the top right of our page. So make sure you like and subscribe. Um, so I look forward to seeing you on our next training as well. Okay, I got all the links that you're going to need in the chat. I don't like catching one of these great videos I love live from Valley, Nebraska. What's up? I was actually stationed in Nebraska, Michael. So I appreciate you saying hello. T squared says, Hey, why can't I get my DMV number uh, with a virtual office? Well, first of all, you absolutely can, but you need to know there's a difference between a virtual office and a virtual address. A virtual address is from iPostal. It's UPS store. And they don't accept them. You Duns number, you can't get a Duns number with a PO box, with a with a mailbox address. But a real virtual office, a Regis, a Da Vinci, an Alliance, you can get the Duns number. So every time I've ever had this proposed, and by the way, a lot of people get stuck here, just so you know that T squared. Okay, um, a lot of people get stuck here. The reality is, you just got to stay away from mailboxes, I postal, UPS, anything that looks like it's a cheap alternative to a Regis or Da Vinci of the world. Those aren't real uh, virtual offices. They're called virtual addresses. They're mailboxes and Dun & Bradstreet won't accept them, but uh, Dun & they should have an issue with DaVinci, T-squared. I've never actually had anybody. So I called DB and asked him flat out because if you're using a real virtual office, not a virtual address, you shouldn't have that per that you shouldn't have that issue. But if you are having the issue, which it sounds like you are, then give Dun & Bradstreet a call. If you're a client of ours, then get our advisor on the phone and our advisor will help you resolve that issue because that's part of what you get when you're working with us. If not, then I would get DMB on the phone and ask him because I've never seen this issue with a real virtual office, only a virtual address that's not. But if it's DaVinci, then I would call them to figure it out. Maybe even see if DaVinci will give you a different address. That could be another solution there as well. And again, if you're a client of ours, just call your advisor and our advisor will help you through this process. We've dealt with this many a times before we can help you through that as well. All right. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of good information about everything you need to know about business bank accounts and how it ties into your ability to get money. Look forward to seeing you. We're talking about charitable credit cards, how to get credit cards for your business to actually help charities. We'll talk about that tomorrow. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more cool information um, on getting money to grow your business. I look forward to seeing you next time. We're talking about more cool ways to get money to start and grow your business. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.